So now we're coming to some specific wine terms. Some of them we have already discovered. Um, and I will just pick some of them and explain them a bit more in detail. So the AP number or Amtliche Prüf number, um, which you find on each label, either in the range of Qualitäts or Predicates wine, is indicating that the wine went through a sensory assessment in terms of quality, but also in terms of Typicity, just by passing that evaluation, the wine can be marketed like that. Um, Badisch Rotgold is a term maybe worth mentioning here. It's a so-called Rotling from the area from Baden. Rotling means that you are vinifying white and red grapes together to get in the end something color-like comparable to a rosé. Typically for Baden, it is made from Grauburgunder, Pinot Gris, and Spätburgunder, Pinot Noir grapes. Bereich is the subcategory of a um, region. So it could be translated something like a district. An example is for the Mosel, for example, the Bereich Bernkastel, and for Rheingau, the Bereich Johannesberg. Boxbeutel, you might have come along. These Typical bottle shape, it's a flat round shaped bottle with a short neck, which is traditional for wines from Franken. Deutsches Weininstitut means it's the wines industry's organization responsible for promoting um, the quality and the marketing of German wines. So it's abbreviated as DWI. It's History is quite interesting, actually initiated by a riot of wine growers at the Mosul 100 years ago. Um, this finally led to the fact that the German government thought about doing the wine industry a favor and investing into um, advertising wine. Deutscher Wein, meaning Germans table wine category and Einzellage means it's an appellation of origin or a single vineyard site often of a certain renome. Erzeugerabfüllung is a typical term that you often find on a label. It refers to wine bottled by the producer and not by someone else. Federweiser is a typical product that you get on a local scale here in Germany. It means it's a half done wine, so it's um, a wine still in fermentation. It is unfiltered, it is yeah, containing CO2, but it's not finished with fermentation. Therefore, it's um, a yeah, speciality that you get usually um, around harvest. Feinherb is also a term often used on a label. It's an unofficial and therefore not regulated expression of the sugar scaling. So it means something like halbtrocken, but not that strict. So you have a wider variation in terms of residual sugar for wines labeled Feinherb. Gutsabfüllung is a term similar to to Erzeugerabfüllung, it means it is estate bottled. So not somewhere else, it is bottled on the estate where it was produced and vinified. Hochgewächs is a yeah, bit older term. Um, it should bring a bit more prestige to the product as it is an above average just 100% Riesling and the quality of the grapes is a bit higher than that for normal Qualitätswine in the different German wine growing regions. So here we have a further list of really specific wine terms for wine in, made in Germany. Um, Kellereiabfüllung is also similar to Gutsabfüllung, referring that the wine was bottled by a Kellerei, in that case B. 
Bigger Commercial Winery. Klassische Flaschengärung or traditionelle Flaschengärung is a term that you very often find on sparkling wine being produced in Germany. It's made in that case under the traditional second fermentation in the bottle. Liebfrauenmilch, it's, uh, yeah, as mentioned before, a generic term of a white Rhine wine, which is usually found with a residual sugar between 18 to 45 gram per liter. Oechsler is a very often used term in the German wine industry. It is a scaling of the sugar level of the grapes. It's referring just to the density. So you measure the density and you skip um, the one before the comma and everything afterwards coming is then the degree of Oechsler. Perlwein is a semi-sparkling wine. Uh, you find it either like in Italy in the Frizzante style, so um, you could aerate the CO2 or you can also get semi-sparkling where the CO2 in the product is derived from the direct fermentation in the product. Here further terms, Schillerwein is um, similar to Badisch Rotgold, um, a rosé looking wine which is based from vinifying white and red grapes together. In that case here Schillerwein is coming from Württemberg and not from Baden. Schlossabfüllung is a wine bottled by a Schloss, so on a castle, a um, bit more rare to find than Gutsabfüllung. Schorle, also a typical German product. Um, it's a Spritz. Um, usually you have yeah, a mixture between wine and uh, carbonated water. Sekt is a quite generic term in Germany, but it goes back to quality sparkling wine. So meaning the sparkling wine produced either from one or two fermentation, either in the bottle or in the tank should have at least 3.5 atmosphere in terms of pressure. Steillage, sometimes you also find that mentioned on label, means literally steep side or steep slope. A vineyard with an inclination of minimum 30% is necessary here. Weisserbst is another specific term that you in Germany, can find on the label. It means that it is um, a rosé or even less in color than a rosé coming from a single variety that is pressed quite quickly without a maceration. Winzer is the Windner or the wine grower, and this is also part of the term Winzersek. Winzersek means that the wine for the gray, for the sparkling wine that you have in your hand is coming from the winery that is also selling the sparkling wine to you. Furthermore, the way of sparkling wine production here is the traditional bottle fermentation. Mm -hmm.